Hey, welcome back to Baird's Grid. In this video, we're going to learn about the powers of using two dimensional grids when dealing with probability. Coming up. So, if there are two components to an experiment and the sample space is not too large, like two spinners with four sections each, a two dimensional grid is useful for illustrating the possible outcomes and hence calculating probabilities. Each point on the grid represents a possible outcome and each outcome is equally likely to occur. Now let's deal with a very quick example. Two square spinners, each with one, two, three and four on their edges are twirled simultaneously. Part A, draw a two dimensional grid of the possible outcomes and part B, use your grid to determine the probability of getting a three with each spinner, a three and a one, an even result with each spinner. So part A, we'll draw a two dimensional grid and we'll label the horizontal axis spinner one and the vertical axis spinner two. Now we know each spinner has outcomes one to four, so we can label that on our two dimensional grid. And then each point on the grid represents an outcome. And in this case, we have 16 possible outcomes. So in part one, we're going to determine the probability of getting a three with each spinner. So spinner one and spinner two each get a three, which is that point there. So the probability of a three with each spinner is one out of 16. And that's indicated by the yellow dot on our grid. So part two is the probability of getting a three and a one. Well, on our grid, you can see that we can have a three and a one here and a three and a one over here. So that is two out of 16 or one over eight. And that's indicated by my orange cross. Part three is the probability of getting an even number with each spinner. So we can use our two dimensional grid and we can see a two and a two, a two and a four, a four and a two and a four and a four are the favorable outcomes for obtaining an even number with each spinner. So that's going to be four over 16 or one over four. And that's indicated by my purple circle on my two dimensional grid. Okay, let's do another question. And this time you can pause the video and attempt it for yourself. So two students each select a day of the week at random. Find the probability that a Tuesday and a Friday are selected. At least one student selects a weekend day. The selected day starts with the same letter. So pause the video here and attempt it for yourself. And when you're comfortable and you think you're done, then press play and I'll show you my work solution. Okay, so before we do anything, we have to do a two dimensional grid. And I'm going to label this student one and student two. And then I'm going to fill in all the possible outcomes. So we have Monday to Sunday for student one and Monday to Sunday for student two. And then all these points represent the possible outcomes for this investigation. Okay, so let's find the probability of getting a Tuesday and Friday. So student one could select a Tuesday and student two could select a Friday. So that's that point there. And then student one could select a Friday and student two could select a Tuesday. So that would be that point there. So two over 49, and that's indicated by our yellow dot on our two dimensional grid. Okay, let's move on to part B, the probability of at least one student selecting a weekend. Okay, so there's quite a few options here. Student one could select either a Saturday or a Sunday, and student two could either select a Saturday or a Sunday. So if you count all these points, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 points. Now bear in mind that there is an overlap. Student A or student one and student two both select a Saturday or a Sunday. So these four are overlap. We don't double them up. We count them as one option. So there are 24 favorable outcomes from a total of 49. And that's indicated by my green dot on my grid. Okay, part C is the probability of the day starting with the same letter. So student one and student two both choose a day that starts with the same letter. So that could mean student one chooses Monday, student two chooses Monday. They start with the same letter. Student one selects a Tuesday and student two selects a Tuesday and so on. As long as the students select a day that starts with the same letter. 
So there are 11 out of 49 options available, which is indicated by my red dot on my grid. Now just check that you've got all your working out correct. If you haven't, you can always pause the video and rewind and go back and check what you need to do. So as always, thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, drop me a like. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. And make sure you watch the next video in our series, which is about compound events. And if you've missed any, then you can always go back and watch the playlist on probability. I'll see you in the next one.